Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Ah, Lilu Nishmas, Imi, Morosi, Rus, Basmordechai. Welcome, welcome to all the guests. We're back with Mike Chessel from the Everglades. We're back with Reb Nachman Seltzer from Ramat Shemesh. Ah, if you remember you. years ago, you, <laughs> I've been here for a few days, thank you. But if you remember, there's a guy that used to send me like really stucky kind of emails. Bernie the Burn. <laughs> He's awesome. He's back. I, I saw today, I just noticed today, I saw that somebody got a dollar from Bernie the Burn. From Bernie from Modian. So I'm like, give a dollar? It's interesting. And then I look, it said that he, he gave another to each and every one, to, each team got a dollar from him. So check this out, boys. Here it is. Bernie the Burn. Uh oh. Are my buttons not working? Here we go. Bernie the Burn, $1,000. Skivaldik, he's he's back. I think it's him. Bernie from Modian. Been with us for like four or five, four years, five years. I'm just going to read some of the auras from the last few days. I have to go through all of them. I will basically Hashem go through every single one and, and over time show the good ones. L'chvoid, Rebelli Shlita. Thank you for giving my son Yossi, Yossi Wasserman, meaning and purpose through learning the daf with you every day since Ksubis. And Baruch Hashem, he went from back from Brachas. As Yossi likes to say, he's your Talmud Lemafreya. Since Brachas and Baruch Hashem can't wait to finish Shas with you, thank you again for giving him the Gishmak and learning you was missing. A.B. I started learning the daf from... Shabbat during COVID, I skipped brachot, which I learned 10 times. However, the combination of COVID and starting in the very demanding job, I barely daven mincha mayrev every day for three years, even though I have only fell behind on learning by one day times two since I started learning the daven. I joined the NUI 37 days ago and my davening stats have significantly increased. Thank you for saving me from finishing shas without davening mincha. Rachel Lefkowitz, in honor of my father, who is always busy with the daf. I put this here because it sounds like my children. That's what they complain the whole time. Uh, Ellie from CH Plays. What's that? I should know what that means. Huh? You did not mention in your video. Dear Belly, I might be a, a bit late in adding my part to the campaign, which is not true. The campaign is still going, Batsim. Oh, I do want to remind Oilam that there's a raffle, $10,000 raffle. Whoever puts in 100 bucks. Gets, uh, gets to play in the raffle. Next Sunday, Bezer Hashem, a week from today, we are doing the... Oh, yeah, we'll be here. Yeah, this, the night, uh, that night is uh, Avi Kamiansky's wedding. That night, we're going to the wedding. After the wedding, following morning, I'm going to Chutzlar's for Pesach. So, the raffle's still going. 100 bucks, you could still enter. Um, so, it's not too late. We were at one point... We're over 1.1 1. 1 now. Bar Hashem. Some guy that gives a share donated today a lot. I want to make sure to add the US $100 to part of this amazing MDY family. I can't say that you changed my life, but you're definitely my motivation to keep to Yoimi. That's, that's change. That is change. That's what people, they think that their face changes or that they, they start walking like this. No, a small change. You keep to the Yoimi, that's a change. You start out in Mincha, that's a change. You hear about this? Whatever. Especially, he's, <laughs> he's been perfect since the day he was born. Especially when being tired in the evenings, when I really look forward to listening to you. Thank you. Raboy Sai, here's Mike Chessel in a video. If you want to know who he, he's sitting right here next to me, here he is. This, uh, this is Yosef Ben Zev's son who just became a chassan. Three. Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah. Hey, I'm here with Ellie Ben Zev from Chicago. We came for a spazir in the big cypress swamp. Hey, is that a piano? What's that? Who's talking Kufav. Kufav, that's right. Another showmare trying to buy time. Listen, we don't just learn the doff. We live the doff. Remember there's a piano in the swamp. What? There was a piano in the swamp. There's a, you have a picture of that. I do? Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, Crown Heights, got it. The boys have very sad news. Um, he came here to the Shir, Chaim Levi Groner. He was in a wheelchair, wheelchair bound. His dream was to come to our Shir, and he finally made it once. He, he came with Bacharim, there was a team, so Bark Dynamis. Uh, I'll show you some pictures, you'll know who I'm talking about. Here he is. He was just Nifter, and uh, 
is the Shamshan of an Aliyah, and, and it's very sad for many, many people, all the Bachram who took care of him. A lot, there's teams that went with him, he had a van, and he came to Shiurim, he was there on Shabbos also, he was there by the Shabbaton, here is another, yeah, here he is at the Siam for Baba Kama, Mamas just recently. It's very sad, and uh, as the Shomashan have an aliyah, his family should, uh, should not know from any more tsar. Steve Israeli, hey Rebelli, awesome to see you last week in Borough Park, very inspirational. Appreciate all that you do for us and for the Kla- for Kla- Yisrael. Definitely has changed my life and my family's life for the better. Wanted to share the pics of someone learning in Landau's. Landau's is the famous minion factory in Flatbush, while I was davening Mincha. Just truly, Shmuel Israeli, green motorcycle guy, since Moid Katan. Not brachot, so accept and understand that I will not be part of the Sima Shas cruise. Not true. You still, you can still make it in somehow if there's extra spot or something. We'll go back to those guys from Shabbat. No, don't give up. Don't give up. Maybe there'll be a raffle. That's right. We'll raffle off one room. Here's a guy in Landau's doing the daf. Robert Early Shkoyach, you are going to be entered into the raffle because I saw you gave a hundred bucks. Shkoyach. Anonymous for the safe. No, that was today. Now is the safe and speed of return of all the hostages. Paras Achoydish, Rufur Shleim Ali Melech Ben Tzipayra. Paras Achoydish, Lili Nishim Azachay Ben Moshe, Lili Nishim Azachay Ben Yosef. Paras Achoydish, Aaron Freeman, it should be his chus to rebelli. Continuous Yad Hashem teaching Torah to Klai Yisrael. Paras Achoydish, Yosem Chai Yisrael for all those chusim that come from supporting Lili Melech Torah. Paras Achoydish, the Yom and Rosenfeld for Atzlocha in business in all my endeavors, Amen. Parasa Shavua, Rufur Shlema, Mordechai ben Esther, huge part of MDY, Rufur Shlema. Parasa Yoim, Lunishmas Avram ben Yantava Koyen, Rabbi Dak, Rami Koyen, the youngest partisan. Maza? Yeah. Rami Koyen, he wrote about the Rimnitzer, he wrote the youngest partisan. Oh. Yeah, he's not a pastor. You got it. Oh, that's the name of the book. Okay, I hear. And the Art of the Month, and Alan says, Chus, for an easy childbirth for his daughter and a healthy baby. We today are learning that. Oh, yesterday in Shir, I, I told the Olam how the wheat that I was showing the other day had holes in it. And I thought, okay, it's strange that each kernel had a hole. When I came back from my trip now, my wife said, you know, that you left wheat over here and there was hundreds of bugs that came out and were spazering in my house. So she threw it out. I said, you know, I really love the wheat. So... Today, I got this. This is the quickest present ever. I, I said, I told, I said, don't send me wheat from America. Direct from Shalavim's fields, buck free wheat. Picked by your, our grandchildren, Erev Shavuot. As love did for harvesting wheat, thank you for making learning Gemara free of thorns and deeply rewarding with tremendous appreciation. Rienenbach Burger, no fire alone. Here he is in the back. Raboy Zay, Shkoyach. Huh? You come every single day? How far away do you come? 20 minutes, beautiful. 20 minute drive, no fayalon. It's unbelievable. Shkoyach, thank you. Mwah. We'll have to use this. This is like, this is like the real thing. It's, like in, it's not even straight. It's like, it's like real wheat. It's unbelievable. I don't know where to, I gotta, gotta find something. Oh, very, with a lot of care, with a lot of care, okay. It's definitely Yashan, they said. It's Yashan. Tana. Daf three lines down. Tano. The Kulam, Shaman Lahem Kaaris. Rabbi Sai, if you remember, we had three categories. We had Shavoy, we had Natushin, and we had Retushin. Shavoy is someone who was captured, went away, and we heard a rumor that he's dead. Ritushin is similar, just we didn't hear any rumors. We don't know what his status is. Ritushin, a guy disappears. He disappears and he should have left instructions before he disappeared and emptied it, emptied out his bank account and he didn't. So he's a guy we don't really deal with. We don't deal with his property. Tana, the Hulam, all of them. What's all of them? We're going to see it's only one of these three. So we have to know what all means. All usually means more than one. We pay whoever takes care of one of these three properties, Shavu, Natushim, Ritushim, one of them, we have to figure out which one. We're going to pay him like a sheer crapper. He's going to get, let's say, a third. That's typical. Says Gemara, what are you talking about? If it's the first category, 
What if, as they announce, oh, the big release, the Red Cross is going to bring your father home after all, six months, today is six months, right? It's exactly six months from October 7th. Today is the big day the father's coming home. What does this fair do? He runs to the field and starts eating fruits real quick. Starts hopping off the tree. Why? Because now it's free. As soon as his father comes, he can't do it. Zariz, if he runs ahead, Beniskar, Hava. So he can eat all the fruit, every single last one. So certainly he's going to get a third. If he can take 100%, so he can get a third. Okay, so we're talking about Retushim. What's Retushim? The worst category. The what? A guy disappears. Unfortunately, it happens. Rabbi leader told me a story. I said this over yesterday. I said it again. Story from London. A guy disappeared. They found him. He got a call once. Oh, we found him 12 years later. The story's everywhere. People decide they had enough. They pick themselves up and leave. For whatever reason. They have a breakdown. Midlife crisis. They're gone. Says the Gemara. Don't tell me he gets like a share crab. He gets a third. When the halach is, we grab, we, whoever goes into his property, we, we, we kick him out. And the reason is why. Because if he had time to leave, he wasn't forced to leave. He should have made arrangements. He didn't make arrangements. That's his problem. He obviously doesn't want you in there. Hello, Anatushim. Okay. So we broke it down. It's not the first, it's not the third, it's the middle. Natushim, somebody who's captured, we have no clue. We don't know what his status is. Unfortunately, we know, we know what's going on. We know about it today. Like there's people in Gaza, we don't know what they're, some we know they're dead, some we don't know. We don't know. Leman, even today, there's rumors about certain people in Gaza that are dead. Uh, yes or no? Rumors. There's no testimony. We don't know. It's a coil. That's what a coil is. Certain people, they say, 33 out of the 133 left are, are dead. That's what they say. Bodies. Right? Hold on, hold on a second. Leman. So, who does this go according to? According to Rabbanon, they say, Rabbanon say, if you're Natushim, you're the middle category, you went away, you don't know, we got, you can't go in there. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says Natushim and Shavu is the same exact thing. You put a relative, you put somebody in there to take care of it. And so, we already said it can't be Shavu. A Shavu gets, he could eat the entire amount. A Shavu, if a relative goes into a captured person's property, his own relative, his father, Rahman Aslan is captured, he could go and eat all the fruit if he wants. Certainly gets a third. So if Natushim is the same exact halacha shavui, so we put a relative in there, he could eat the entire amount, certainly he'll get a third. So what's the chiddush here? Says the Gemara, I'll tell you what the chiddush is. Kishvuyim v'loy shvuyim. Yes, the, the middle category of Natushim is like shavui, but not exactly. Kishvuyim v'loy shvuyim. If a son goes into the property, we don't chase him out. However, what's his compensation? He doesn't get compensated like a, like a father or a relative that we know is dead, that we heard is dead. If he goes and grabs food, he gets to keep it. But over here, the Natushim, if you go in there, a relative goes in, there's a limit. He gets a third, he can't eat all of the fruit. Ask the Gemara. This is a Mishnah. In Ksubas, if somebody spends money on Nixay Malog, so the famous Nixay Malog, we'll do it again. A woman comes into the marriage, let's say with a nursing home. I use the nursing home because I know a few, they're now married women who came into the marriage with nursing homes. And that's called Nixay Malog. It's on their name, but the husband. Unless that's Nixay Tzayim Bar, it could be they did a deal, I don't know. I just know that they had a, each one of these kids, the father gave them a nursing home before they got married, right? Some, sometimes people put different properties on different people's names, so they don't have this liability, whatever it is, whatever the reason is. Kid has a nursing home, gets married, the husband, here, take a look, It's married to this guy, the husband gets to use or benefit from the Nixay Malug. Now, the husband is a smart guy. He says, look, 
There's a nursing home. Let me invest a little bit. Let, let me improve the nursing home. Let me do a little construction here. He invests in the nursing home. He put in $10 million into the building. And it was a good investment for the time. He thought he's going to be married for 25 years, so it's a great investment. Problem is, he got divorced two weeks later. By the time the checks came in, just, it just so happened to be that when he put all this money in, the, the government put a staff on the, on the funds. You know, you have to wait sometimes in the nursing home. You have to wait. He got divorced. Now what? Garnished. He put a nice investment in, he lost it. He, put in a, he didn't put any investment. He's a typical real estate guy. He squeezed the property dry. Also good. It's Nixim Alok. She gets back the building the way she, not the way she brought it in, whatever it is worth today. So if the building went down in value to 600000 that's all she gets. If it went up to $10 million, that's what she gets. There's no, there's no deal. It's not, it's not locked in like Soyim Barzal. Soyim Barzal is locked in. You come into the marriage, it's worth a million. That's what you get when you leave. I don't care what happens. The husband is responsible. Over, not over here. This is Nixim Alok. So again, the halacha is. We don't care how much he invested. He can invest a lot. He gets whatever he's able to take out. That's what he takes out. We don't compensate him for his investment. So the question is, who cares? Whatever he put in, he put in. Whatever he took out, he took out. The question is, how come according to Shimon Gamliel by Netushim, you say, how much does a Netushim get? Let's go back to remind the Eilam. What do we just say? Netushim is not like Shavu. Shavu, the guy who ever works the field gets up to 100%, definitely 30%. Netushim, if a guy comes into the field and works the field, a relative, he'll get up to 30%. Why? We just said if you invest in somebody's field, a husband invests in, in his wife's nursing home, he can get nothing. If they get divorced, bye-bye. We don't compensate. So over here, when a father shows up from captivity, why would he get 30%? Bye-bye. He invested in Shalom. Why is it different than a husband and a wife? Says I'll tell you why. Holy Damiel Allah, the Snan, Hamoitzi, what does it say here? Not at the Snan, maybe. Okay. Hamoitzi, it says, I'll never say, you stick Tano. Kimoitzi, I'll never say, Acher Domi. Oh. So, this is the famous case of Mion. Yevaldik, check this out. We have a bunch of characters here. We're actually going to add more. There's a father, a mother, a brother. If you look closely, the brother is something special. He's a starky guy in I don't know what. Half his shirt is down. It's a, it's a mahalach. It's beautiful. The father goes five. The mother, brother are left alone taking care of this youngster. Now, again, talking about in those days, poverty was terrible. People were dying left and right. She needs to eat this kid. So what do they do? They marry her off. Oh, here comes the guy. Yoshe Bear, another brisker, like the brother. Ah, oh, Eidi Shoma, they're married. But this, this marriage is only the Rebbe on a marriage. So if she wants, all she has to do is, if she be Yoshe Bear, boom, divorced. What is it called again? They told me last night, what is it called by the Arabs? Kala? Katala. And by Arabs, all you have to say three times, Katala, 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 it's over. You don't have to write again. Over here also, because it's the Rabbana, she could say whatever she says, if she, bye. Oh, so now we understand. Since she has the ability to get out of this marriage without even thinking, one day the guy does something she doesn't like and she says, if she, she's not going to want to invest. He invests in her property, he loses. So therefore, our Gemara is like that. That's the similar case. It's not a regular marriage. Regular marriage, you invest, and then you decide to get divorced. That's your problem. You got divorced. You're the one that wrote to get, not the wife. Over here, she's in charge. So we got to be careful here. Alma, since he's not positive that his investment is going to go to the right place, he, the husband of this Tana, could ruin her field. In other words, they'll just milk it. And I'm not a farmer, but the way I understand this is you have to let the field rest. You could ruin the karka. You just over, over use it. You, you keep on planting and planting. You don't fertilize. You, there's things to do to ruin it. In order for him to have interest in the field and to treat it as it's his own, we say, hey, you get compensated. You're going to get a third. 
So here also we said, you're right. There is a case where a husband invests in the wife's nursing home, he gets zero. But over here we want him to, to feel that his investment is going to go to the right place. He shouldn't ruin the field. So we say, okay, you get a third. You have to know, each, each case is different. In a situation where we're concerned that the husband is going to ru- ruin the field, in that case he gets compensated a third. And we just learned, the chulon, shamim lem karis, when we learned, I just mentioned briefly, what's the chulon? Any person who goes into somebody else's field, you get, he gets a third. But we only came up with one case. What was the case? Netushim. The chulon la'asuyi mai. So what's the extra case? Says the Gemara la'asuyi hodom rav nachman rav shmuel shavu yishinishba. You have a captured person. Maridim karvil and a You put a relative in there. Yotza ledas. Rabbi Isai, what is that called? Yotza ledas. Let's go back to the uh, remind island. Which one of the, these are Yotza ledas? Retushim. He went on his own. Nobody asked him. Nobody forced him. He just disappeared. Ain moiridin. Karev lenachasov. Then nobody goes into his property. Why? Because he, he left in a, the right frame of mind. He could have done it himself. From the fact that he never told anyone Hey, take care of my property, take care of my factory, whatever he has. Obviously, he doesn't want somebody to go in there. We're looking for a second case. Here it is. Rav Nachman says, This is the Chiddush. When a person runs away, he's like somebody that, that's in captivity. Now we have to understand, what does it mean he ran away? Whatever you want to call it. I say Krogo, you say Krago. You say Kargo. You say Kargo? What does the art school say? Okay, fine. The lady who did the, the Nakudas here, she messed up. Kargo. It says Krogo by me. I read what I see. Kargo. What it means is taxes. In America, if you're familiar, so very high taxes in New York, much lower in Florida. So people make a lot of money in New York. It pays for them to run away to Florida, so they run. They leave everything behind. They, they have big mansions and everything in New York, and they live in a condo on the beach in Florida. Now the problem is they can't come back to New York because if they come back, if they spend, they swipe their card in New York, the authorities pick up on it right away. If you buy a, a, a flight to, from Florida, they, they, they're on it. So they stay there. It's a whole matzah. They, they do a whole, whole, they're allowed to be in New York, 10 days a year, whatever, they have a whole thing. I don't know how many days. It has to be a certain amount of days that you're in Florida, otherwise this trick doesn't work. That's running away. Running away from the authorities not to pay the taxes in New York. But when you run away, you're not running away from minute to minute. You don't have a cop knocking on your door. You go with Yishuv Adas, you know exactly what you're doing. You, you make some phone calls to the real estate agent in Florida. I'm coming next week. You do it like a mensch. So you can take care of your business. There's a, a famous Maisa that they say about the Vilna Gain that he, he, was, he was in Golos trying to make it to Tarot Yisrael. And he noticed a Balbi Tachan, he says, there's a guy that they knocked on his door, he said, pay the taxes. He, he says, I don't have the money, but come back in, in the evening when the day is over. I have today and I'll pay today. Comes back in the afternoon, I still don't have it, but it'll be fine. So what happened was at the end, the Vilna Gaon saw that this guy was walking the street, and all of a sudden like this, this guy in a carriage came. The bottom line was that somebody made a deal with the parrots. It's always the parrots, yeah? Always, always the parrots. <laughs> he tells the parrots, I want to buy all your fruit. The parrot says, I want uh, a thousand dollars. The guy says, no, I'll give you 800. The part says, no, absolutely not, a thousand. Eh, he's arguing, no. So they walked away. But the guy realized that a thousand dollars is also a good deal. So he tells the Jew, he says, listen, I don't want the parts to know that I'm bending to this thing. I don't want him to know that I, that I lost the, the fight. You buy it and I'll get it from you. So the Jew said, okay, but I need to be paid the amount of the taxes. He says, okay, fine. So that's how he got his money, the last minute. Has got the protest, taxes. If you have bitachin, it gets paid up. So says the Gemara, and then of course the story was also said about many different other rebbes. But don't believe it; it's the story happened with the guy. <laughs> says the Gemara, 
Ilay Machmas Praga. I get Karga. You know what? I realize now that it's not such a great story because they don't say about Rabbi Nachman and Breslov. Usually the good ones, they had it by the Vilna Goyen. What? Nachman always paid his taxes. That's why. No, no, no. It was, it was, it was the Vilna Goyen seen from the side. It wasn't the Vilna Goyen. He saw the story happen. The Baal Shem Tov saw it happen. Not Rabbi Nachman and Breslov. Okay. It wasn't good enough. To... Oh, we're talking about Rabbi Nachman. Rabbi Nachman. Karga. Karga. Hainul says the Gemara, but Targo, Hainul Das, he had time to, to figure out what's going on. Hello, Bereach, Machmas Merodin. The guy. Mardin. Mardin. Because of, what are they, they titled? Let's see if you know what it means. He killed somebody. He murdered somebody. And Rashi says, oh, we're talking about this kind of government that doesn't like, doesn't appreciate people that kill. They go after them. No, because I guess there's some governments at certain times in, in, in history. If you had a fight with somebody, just duel it out. You know, you, whoever, whoever kills the other person quicker wins. No, over here we're not like that. The Barsayim, they're very, you know, they had certain manners. Can't kill. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a nice thing to kill. And if you, you killed somebody, they, they go after you. Fine. Omer Rabbi Yudam Shmuel. Shavi Shinishba. Viniach Kama Liktar. Anavim Liktar. Bikitzer, somebody who's captured. And he left fruit to be harvested. It could be, where's my wheat? Oh, my wheat. Look at this. Look at the mamish. We're going to use it. He, now you chop. Oh, he had, a, he had to harvest the wheat. Okay, fine. Put it back. Wow. No, 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 no. Okay, no. Yeah. You got to be careful with this thing. Here. Fine. Nachman, you thought that we're, we're still in the emails? Just not you, him. Menachem, I mean, Menachem. You thought we're in the, We're almost done with the daf. Alright, we love him. Grapes. Tomorrow, Meligdor. Zesim Limtsoi. He had he left over grapes, olives, uh, wheat. Dates, tomorrow Mligdar, they say, Bez and Yordim and Chosov. Okay, you gotta, you gotta save it. It's about to get ruined. Um, I'm meeting up at Trumpets. Reboy Sai, I have a question for the Oilam. How much does the Napa Trumpets get paid? Who says nothing? Who? Oh, because you were there last night. <laughs> He's right. He's right. He knows his stuff. Abba Trumpets does chesed. He could appoint other people to harvest. He himself usually doesn't harvest. He's the guy in charge. It's chashem. So Bezim puts a point in Apitrabas. He harvests all these fruits. Then we put a relative in there. How much does the relative get? A third. Listen, we got away for free. Putting this guy, we point the guy for free. So why do we have to put in a relative that's going to take a third? Let's get a guy that's going to do chesed for free. Says the Gemara, "Happy trouble the knani loy mikminim." We don't put happy troubles for beards for beard, bearded people. What does that mean? An happy troubles works well for a small child, a guy, a kid, a yosim, some some person that needs help chesed. You feel good? Reminds me. Here we got a big tzaddik over here. Michael was telling me that he adopted a girl, five years old. Mamish Chesed, he just fell into his lap. And I'm not going to say Barabim, very hard to adopt a kid. It's like, you know, kid had trauma, everything. Ali even says, one of the first times, can I say Barabim? One of the first, the first time, I should say, that he left, the, the kid now is 16 years old. So 11 years, 15, 10 years, he couldn't go on a vacation without her. She, she's attached because of all the stuff that happened to her. This is the first time he's in Eretz Yisrael by himself with his wife and the Shabbaton, one Shabbos. That's chesed, mamish chesed. Why? Because the kid is five years old. If somebody came to him with a long beard and said, hey, take me into your house for 10 years, and, but you can't go on vacation ever, he's going to say, it's because it's a kid, right, Michael? Yeah. Something about a kid. You do chesed to a kid. I'm not saying that everybody would do it. You're a big tzad. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Very hard. And it's, listen, the, the schar is it's unbelievable. Jewish kid, the whole thing, unbelievable. She's a Bisyakov girl. She goes to, she's in Bisyakov now. 
Her mother is not, al- not alive anymore. Mamish, she came from a bad place. Yeah, what? Well, it's unbelievable chesed. Unbelievable. Okay, so that, it's very hard to get somebody to do chesed to an adult. We all understand it. Omer Avuna, a meridian kadon lilifte shavos. Says Ravuna, check this out. There's three, three halachas, he says. Okay? Not so confusing. Halacha number one, and this is all logic. A minor does not help us out with somebody's property. Okay? You don't call up a 10 year old and say, hey, we have a problem. Somebody is in Gaza in a tunnel, and I need you to work the field. It's just not something you do. Why? Because he's going to ruin the field. He knows that he's 10 years old. Okay, that's, that's halacha number one. A cotton doesn't go into somebody, it doesn't help us out with fields. Number two, and this is also logic, let's say there's a miner who inherited a field. You don't allow his brother to take care of it. Why? Because suddenly it's going to become the brother's. The brother will just take it. He'll grab it. People will get greedy. He starts off doing chesed, and before he knows it, listen, I'm already helping him out for five years. It should probably be mine. Yeah, it is mine. I think, I, I, if, I don't, if I can remember correctly, I think daddy said I should have his field also. I don't know, something. So before, fine, next. The next thing is that not only does a relative not help out a minor, but a relative of a relative shouldn't help out a minor. Why? Because a relative of a relative will try to hop it for the relative, for the close relative. Okay, and for that we have a very nice chart. It's a little bit over whatever. So here's the chart. You have a man, this guy had a child with this woman. Okay, you married Rachel, they get married. Unfortunately, I caught on to this later on when Yoshi was already sleeping. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I had a, all I did was I shrunk him to make him small. I couldn't, I didn't know how to take him out. I could take him out, but I wouldn't know how to do the, the animation of the, the movement of it. So I just made him and I wrote cotton, okay? Because that's what's going on here. Ruben is a minor. He shares a father with somebody else, okay? Shimon, you see, Shimon is a gadol. That's all I did. Okay, so these, these two guys are brothers from a father. You see, they share the same father, not the same mother. One is the one, the one has a mother with the, with the fish in the cart and the phone in her tichel. No, that's that one. Anyway, that's that one. This woman has two sons also from another. So basically, the, the guy on the left, Levi, is a brother with the guy in the middle. This, the minor on the right is the brother with the guy in the middle also. The guy all the way to the right and the guy all the way on the left are not related at all. In fact, that's what Rebchia was like that. Rabbi Rebchia, the if Ruvain, let's say, was a woman, he would be able to marry the guy all the way on the left. They're so unrelated. They just share a brother, but they're not related. Huh? That's how the Chavz Chaim did it? Okay. I, I'm not aware of that. Fine. So the halacha is that the guy all the way on the left, Levi, cannot help out little Ruven guy on his field. Why? Since he's related to Shimon, he is a brother with Shimon, so he's going to steal the, the field from Ruven, the little guy, and give it to his brother Shimon. He himself, Levi himself, won't take it for himself. He's like a stranger. He won't be able to take it for himself. That won't work. But he'll lie enough and he'll tell people that it's really his brother Shimon's field. That's what's going on there. Yeah? Too complicated or not? It's very simple. Maybe the, I mean the, the chart is like a whole complicated thing. Okay. Okay. Let's see inside. Halacha number one: a cotton doesn't help out. But like cotton, and a cotton's brother relative should not help out the cotton because he'll take it for himself. And not only that, but like cotton, and not a relative who's a relative of the cotton. Why? Dilma mafsilu. You don't allow minors to do work in captured people's real estate. Because they'll ruin it. And not a relative of a relative in the property of a cotton. So we're talking about a mother, a brother from a mother. Like over here, Levi, all the way to the left, is a brother 
through a mother with Shimon. And now, you don't, the, the, the second halacha that we had before, that a brother should not help out his younger brother in the field. Why? Because he will take over the field and make it his own. From here we see, again, a brother, a 25-year-old brother, should not help out his six-year-old brother in the field. Why? Because a 25-year-old will steal his brother's field. But random guy, a random guy off the street, could help the minor. Why? From here you see, a Because what is he going to do? This random guy that works the field, he cannot steal the field from the cotton. What is he going to say? Oh, I'm sitting in the field already for three years, it's mine. It doesn't work. It's not going to work. That's not Chazaka. The miner doesn't have to... What does Chazaka mean? We should make it as a... Okay, I'm saying it as if everybody knows, but maybe there are people that don't know. If you sit in somebody in, in a field for three years, with, even without documentation, it becomes yours. Why? Because nobody made a macha, nobody protested. That does not work with a miner, because a miner doesn't know how to protest. So just the fact that you're sitting in the field for three years doesn't mean it's yours. It means that the miner didn't know. The peasant put you in there. So you see that it's, you cannot perform chazaka. Three years of chazaka doesn't work for a miner. And even if this child <coughs> became, I got it. Joseph, I got it. I'm holding it. Even if the, even if the miner became a gadol and he continued holding onto the field for three years, it also doesn't work. Why? Because he was a miner. And he had no idea. He thought it's really that other guy. How could he protest? So what if he became 20 years old now? We just turned to Lama Tesson's base, sponsored by Kidnovations, in honor of my uncle, Rebbe Khanan Pressman, and as a schosfer, Kibbisim Kobin Begum, by official mitzvah motivators, in honor of Dr. Mrs. Robert Lehman, for sponsoring Gemara's, for Kiel's Koshner Tamid, and continued learning Daf Yoimi. Somebody wrote, I, I should get his thing. Somebody donated from Ner Tamid. I'll base Hashem, I'll try to look it up again. He said, thank you, he hasn't learned in many years, and because of Baba Kama, he learned, and now he can, Baruch Hashem is continuing, he's hoping to finish Shas with us. Amazing stuff. A 25-year-old brother should not help out his younger brother in the field when they're brothers from the same father. But if they're only brothers from a mother, maternal brothers, less than but it's not a problem, because since they don't inherit, he can't, he can't claim it's his field. He's like a stranger. And the Gemara is going to regret this or take it back. Retract, I should say. Mm-hmm. And the problem with two brothers from the same father is only when we're t- talking about fields. But houses, less limba, a house, there are neighbors, and the neighbors will testify, no, it's the miners. We know for a fact this kid lived here. It's not the brothers. We're talking about fields. It's only because they don't have documentation with, uh, what is it called? Your lawyer. Um, not deed, what shows you the... Uh, what, what do you call it? Plat. Survey. Survey, okay. When, if you have a survey and shows this, then, then we don't have a problem. There's a survey, there's rumors, everybody knows this young, this minor, it's his field and his brother won't be able to take it away from him. Says Gemara Belai, it's not true. Even a brother from a mother could cause issues and go around and give it to the other brother. But kids are, it's not good. It doesn't matter if it's a house. This is also we don't we don't care that people know or don't know. There could be issues. Even if there's a survey, not a survey. We don't allow a brother to help out a younger brother. Says the Gemara story. There was a, a grandmother who had three daughters. Here's the chart. This is from Yivamas. The, uh, what, what? Nachman is laughing as if, Reb Nachman is laughing as if he never saw this. This is the whole Yivamas we have this. So anyway, we have, we have the, the older lady. She's so old that her clothes, clothes are already white. Not only her hair. And she has a cane. Fine. And of course, she has Crocs. There's no Shiloh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
אפילו ביאשי. אשתבוי וחד או בראטו. אוי. אשתבוי איהי וחד או בראטו. The grandmother and one of the daughters were captured. Here we go. Here you see. Captured. Boom. In the time of the Benata, the other two daughters, Shechiva Chodam Inayu v'Shavke Yinuka. Number three over here, let's call her three with the umbrella. This is what happened to her. Boop. She went bye-bye and she left a young boy. The young boy inherits his mother. The young boy could inherit his grandmother. If the grandmother dies, so the three girls will get a third of whatever the grandmother owns. Being that his mother died, so he fills her shoes, he takes her third. The issue right now is we don't know if she died or not. Omar Abaya, what do we do exactly? Look, Minu, Lenichse, Biyodida, Chosso. If, do you remember from Ahmed Aleph? Who's the man, the Omar, who says that if there's a captured person, we allow a relative to go in and get a third? Who's, this, who's the man, the Omar? Rishim Ben Gamliel. He says, by Netushim, we don't know the status. There's no rumor if the grandmother died or not. So perhaps we'll allow sister number one to control the property. Perhaps the grandmother died. So over here is the very sad Taisvis that I pointed out the other day. Dibur Maskel Dilma Shkiva Safta. And we know this, all, we're very familiar with this, unfortunately. It says, Tais is all the way at the end. Ina, hocha shenishbu. Tais is saying, why would we think that the grandmother died? Because she was captured. Chayshin and tfei This is a great chance that the grandmother died. Lefi sho'asulam yisurim. They torture these poor uh, hostages. And therefore, there's a very big chance that she's dead. Like I mentioned. 33 out of the 133 are definitely dead, they say, right? There's a big chance that she's dead. So what if the grandmother died? So if the grandmother died, then sister number three inherits a third. She's dead, it goes down to the, to the boy. Sister number one cannot take care of little boy's property. That's one of the halachas that Rav Huna said. You don't allow a relative, especially an aunt, she'll say, hey, it's my property. What do you mean? I've been working this property for 10 years, it's mine. <clears throat> so what's the other choice? Allow the, the child to take care of his own property. No, that's a problem. Perhaps the grandmother didn't die. You cannot allow a, a minor to take care of grandmother's property. Why? He's going to ruin it. Omar Abayo Hilkoch Palgo Yavino Lolachoso. Our boys are here. Very nice. Here's the property. Half you give to the sister number one, half you give to the minor, and you appoint an apitropos. Vidach Palgo Mekmino Lapitropoli Yinuko. He gets an apitropos, and that, that solves the problem. Rav Omar, Migo, the Mikmin apitropos, Palga, once you're already looking for an apitropos to take care of the minor's half, Mikmin apitropos, the Palga, you do this. The same apitropos should just take care of the entire field. Says the Gemara, let's say, Shkiva Safta. Okay, rumors, not, not Adam or anything. Rumor, the rumor has it that the, the grandmother died. So now the grandmother's property gets divided by three. One part goes to sister number one, to sister number two, sister number three. So sister number one definitely gets one part. His mother died, so he definitely gets a third. There's no question that he gets a third. What about the third, third? The one that really belongs to sister number two. We don't know if she's alive or dead. What do we do with that part? So we take that part, the third, and we split that in half. When you split a third in half, what do you have? A sixth. That's called a danka. So you take a sixth and you give it 
La chosa to the sister. Vidach danko moikmin and lei abitrope liyinuko. So here goes. A third you give to the son, to the boy, because his mother died. A third you give to, to, to sister number one, because her mother died, she gets a third. The final third with the, for the woman that has a question mark on her, woman number two, you take the adding split it in half, a sixth goes to the sister number one, a sixth goes to the Yenuka, but for that we appoint an Apitropos. Comes Rava, says the exact same thing as he said before. Rava Omar, since we already found somebody to do chesed with a small kid and take care of the sixth. So therefore we do this, Rabbi Isai. The Apitropos takes care of both sixth for the third, the entire third. Says the Gemara story, Mori Bar Isak, Osaleya Acha Mebe Chazoi. Mori Bar Isak goes somewhere and he realizes that he has a brother. He leaves his brother there. He left his brother when he's a year old. He goes and does business in a different country, different place. And all of a sudden, his father dies, and he takes, takes the Yerusha. And then his brother shows up. Shalom Aleichem, I'm your brother. He hasn't seen him for many, many years. He's not completely convinced that this is his brother. Maybe it's a liar, I don't know. I want my share. Give me 50%. I have no idea who you are. Who are you? So it's very interesting. The Rebbe Kiva Eger says over here in the Gilead Shas, he says, look in Taisis and Yuvam, Mestav Chafalaf on Beis, the Ramaskal, Rebbe Lazar, and I looked over there, and he says, very interesting. If you recall, in Elam Etzis, we had a story, where Ravashi and Ameymar, they, they made them, they were in an orchard, and the Aris gave them fruit. And when Mari Bar Isak showed up, he says, why did you give him this? You should have given him better. The Gemara wasn't sure if he was being sarcastic, if he was... Being serious, you know, that, that sort of thing, if I remember, recall correctly, yeah? So, who's this Mari Bar Isak? Over there, Mari Bar Isak yelled at his Zaris, wanted to give more fruit to Ravashi. Well, Ravashi and Rav Chizda never saw each other. They didn't live in the same generation. Tysus proves that, and why do I say Rav Chizda? Because it says over here, Asa Lekameh the Rav Chizda. Mari Bar Isak saw Rav Chizda. He did a dintar by Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda was nifter when Rava was alive. Rava was Rav Chizda's son-in-law. Remember the famous Rav, Rava was Rav Chizda's son-in-law. His father Rav Chizda was nifter while Rava was alive. When Rava was nifter, the day Rava was nifter, Ravashi was born. So it's impossible that Ravashi ever saw Rav Chizda. Yet one story happened with Mari Bar Isak with Ravashi. One story happened with Mari Bar Isaac with Rav Chizda. Our Sugi is talking about Rav Chizda. The Sugi Nehla would see this is Ravashi. Says Tysus has to be two different Mari Bar Isaacs. It's impossible. They, look, they never saw each other. Rav, Rav Chizda and Ravashi never saw each other. Okay, fine. Also, the Kamehameha Rav Chizda. Omer Lei, Shapiko Omer Lech. Mari Bar Isaac is right. Shinemar Vayakar Yosef is Echo, Vahim Lei Kiru. They couldn't recognize Yosef. Why? Milamed, Shiyotu Lei Chasim Azokan, Uba Be Chasim Azokan. He left without a beard. He was young. He came back with a beard. So they didn't recognize him. Your brother also, you don't recognize him. Now they ask a question. How did they not recognize Yosef? Yosef looked identical to Yaakov Avinu. So they say, what do they say? Well, it happens to be, I'll tell you, Maisa Shahaya with me. And I can explain this. Maisa Shahaya. My parents left us in Eretz We lived in Bnei Brak. I had a, a, a sister that was born in Eretz She needed medical attention. They, she was born early, and they ran to America with her. They left us for three months. Three months with my uncle. My uncle and aunt. So, when my father came back, my sister came back, we're waiting for him at the airport, and he walked right by us. We didn't recognize him. Recognized His you. Yeah, he recognized me. I know. I no. What it means, like he came out. He came out, and so the guy that took us to the airport says, "That's your father. That's your, he's coming." Like who? His beard turned white in three months. My sister, his beard turned. I didn't recognize him. I was with my mother. Another child. Whatever. Fine. 
So, it, you know, I don't know exactly the colors of their beard, and they looked identical, but they say, you know, everybody's in a chazaka of blind until Hashem opens up your eyes to see. If Hashem doesn't want to see, don't see. Fine. There's a nice maisa here that it's more for the Israelis in the shir, those who speak Hebrew than the Americans. I can explain it also. There was a, a maisa shikamat hoya or hoya where a guy went, I think it's a maisa shoya. A guy left his Rebbe, he went to America. The Rebbe wasn't happy. He went from Europe to, to America and he comes back. He comes back to visit the Rebbe. So the Rebbe said, you're the exact opposite of the Gemara in Hamafkin, the Flamet Tesom Beis. Because the Gemara in the Milam Tesom Beis says, Milamet, Shiyot Sabalei Chasim Oh, I forgot to say that he was a Rebbe, the Cheder. So he says, but over here, it says, Milamet, Shiyot Sabalei Chasim Azokan, Oboba Chasim Azokan. You're a Milamet, you're a Rebbe that went with Chasim Azokan and came back without a Chasim Azokan. Okay. It's a Milamet, Milamet. Okay, fine. Ha. Says the Israelis loved it. They mamish laughed. It was mamish kivaldik. Okay, you guys, you, you don't understand good jokes. Omalei, zilaisi sa'ad adachuat. So, Rav Chizda tells his brother, prove that you're a brother. Everybody could say, I'm a brother. Yeah? Omalei, isli sa'adi. I have Edom. Vidoch aliminei. They're scared. They're shaking from this Mori Bar Isak. Why? The Gavra Alimo. He's a tough guy. So, Mela. That's why they don't want to come testify. So he tells, Rav Chizit tells Mori Barisa, You go and you bring Adam. This is a tough one. Bring Adam that he's not your brother. Otherwise, you have to give him half. It makes no sense. Mori Barisa is not a pushover. He knows Allah's. He does Rav Chizda. He wants money for me. He wants my field. Let him prove that he's a brother. I'm making a special exception in the rule to you. Anybody that's violent like you, violent people, they deserve this. You prove that you're not a brother. Why? Because everybody's scared of you. As Taisvis, so if I'm a violent person, so everybody will come over to me and say, hey, you owe me a million dollars. Now the violent person, the burden of the proof falls on the violent person because Rav Chizah said, I'm making special rules for violent people. So everybody's going to run over to the violent He might beat them up a little bit, but it's Kedai, you get a million dollars afterwards. So it says, Taisis, no, over here it's different because the brother actually has Adam. They're just scared. So he, he's coming with some proof. He's not just a guy off the street. Says the Gemara, oh, Omar Lay, again, Mari Bar Isaac knows his stuff. He says, Saif, Saif, what are you concerned? That I'm a violent person? So I should bring Adam that he's not my brother? How can I bring Adam? No, my Adam are false Adam. So if Saif says, Hadid, let me say They're going to say lies. Everybody's scared of me. Oh, they're not going to lie. Adam won't lie. They might not talk. That's one problem. But to lie and go against the truth, that they won't do for you. The guy brought Adam that he's a brother. Oh, now that I'm a brother and I get my field, I'm a lay. I want half of all the trees. Give him half of the trees. If a person leaves, Older children and younger children and the older ones invested in the real estate, they have to give the smaller ones half. So you, Mari Bar Isak, you invested, you planted trees, give your brother half. There's no comparison. We have a, a bunch of brothers that the father's nifter. The older brother invests, knowing that he's going to have to give his younger brother some stuff later. But over here, Mori Bar Isaac had no idea that he's a brother from another country. So they asked the question. It seems like he did know. Okay, he didn't know he's going to come get it. Whatever the shot is. This came in front of the Rabbami. What do you mean? We said, if a relative goes into a, a family member's property and works it, we give him a third. Shouldn't we give Mori Bar Isaac? It's his field. He did all the work there. We should certainly give him. He says, Gemara, I drew all the coming there. He went back to Rav Chizda. When a, bro- when a relative goes in and helps out another relative that was captured, Bezin told him to do so. He didn't get permission from Bezin. Mari Bezin didn't get permission to invest in the property. The, this brother was a very, he was a, he was a child. Mori Bar had no right to help out his brother. You don't help out young brothers. 
You never told me that he was a minor. Had I known that he's a minor, I would have said that he doesn't get anything. Rabbi Sai, have a wonderful day.